untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another red-white equipment deck, this time with Nahiri Forged in Fury as our commander, a 6-mana 5-4 core artificer with affinity for equipment, so it gets a 1-mana discount for each equipment we control, meaning we can often play Nahiri for just a red and a white mana, and this also applies to the commander attacks, so if the opponent answered Nahiri but we have, let's say, 6 equipment in play, we can still play Nahiri for just 2 mana, and then whenever an equipped creature we control attacks, we get to exile the top card of our library, we may play that card this turn, so if we haven't played a land yet we can potentially play one from exile, and we may cast equipment spells this way without paying their mana costs, and that's what we're going to focus on in this deck. We want to have a deck filled with equipment, so we're very likely to exile them with Nahiri's ability, and we also want to focus on equipment that come pre-attached to a creature, that way we already have those equipped creatures to enable Nahiri once those creatures attack, so the Formiridon mechanic appearing on cards like the Dragonwing Glider are especially powerful alongside Nahiri, since we'll have that Rebel token already pre-equipped, so it can attack right away and trigger Nahiri. And do keep in mind, Nahiri triggers for each creature that's equipped and attacking, so the more we have, the better. And I've split up the deck into two main categories, so we've got equipment on the one hand, and then all the other cards in the other category, and there aren't a ton of other cards left, and most of them still synergize with equipment. I did make the decision to include some of the alchemy cards, there's not a ton of them, but because some of our regular cards like or Nahiri and Brunor have already been modified through alchemy, I may as well just go all the way and go for maximum synergy. So in our equipment category, we've got Bonesaw, 0 mana to play, 1 mana to equip, giving plus 1 plus 2, so it almost acts like a mox when it comes to casting our Nahiri, can give us those explosive openings. I'm also playing Inchblade Companion, a 1 mana equipment creature with a reconfigure, so it is a creature, but it can also be equipped to one of our other creatures, so it still helps us give Nahiri a discount, and then later can potentially make copies of itself, which will give Nahiri an even bigger discount. There's Core Halberd giving plus one plus one in Vigilance, also very cheap to equip. The Boots of Speed can give a creature haste, can also be nice to play a creature, equip it with the boots, attack right away and trigger Nahiri all in the same turn. Rabbit Battery, another equipment creature with a reconfigure, that can also give plus one plus one and haste. Simeon Slings, one of the weaker ones, but still a 1-1 one -one equipment creature that can give plus one plus one. Basilisk Caller gives Death Touch and Lifelink, can be important in racing situations. Bone Splitter is also very efficient, giving two extra power, similar to Eater Virtue, which is just a better legendary version of it, since it can also potentially carry over abilities, like maybe haste if a Rabbit Battery died with an Eater Virtue attached to it. And then at two mana we have Lizard Blades, that can maybe give double strike, so we've got a few keywords we can pass around. Then Colossus Hammer can potentially be attached for free in a few different ways in this deck, even though I'm not actively searching for Colossus Hammer, so it's definitely not a build around card in the deck, but still nice to have, and still a one-man equipment, which is great alongside Nahiri. There's the Leather Armor, which can also be equipped for zero mana to protect one of our creatures, giving it one extra toughness and ward one. May not seem all that impactful, but again, cheap equipment don't need to be all that amazing in this deck to be viable. And then a Shadow Spear can give plus one plus one, a Trample and a Lifelink, even though the equip cost at two mana is a little bit more expensive. Then at 2 mana we've got quite a few equipment that come pre-attached to a creature, like Ancestral Blade, giving plus 1 plus 1 to a 1-1 one -one soldier token, so we get a 2 mana 2-2, two -two. and then once we play Nahiri the soldier can attack and exile a card off the top right away, which is where we want to be. There's Plate Armor, giving plus 3 plus 3 and Ward 1, and equips for 3 mana, but gets a 1 mana discount for each other equipment we control, so it can potentially be equipped for free. Barbed Spike gives plus 1 plus 2, comes attached to a 1-1 one -one Flying Thopter token, got a Citizen's Crowbar giving plus one plus one and comes attached to a Citizen token and can also be sacrificed to destroy an artifact or enchantment. Barbed Banter Fist is one of the many four Mirrodin equipment, so this one comes attached to a 2-2 two -two Rebel token giving it plus one minus one, so we get a 3-1 for two mana and then equips for one mana afterwards. And then Foundry Beetle, another one of our alchemy cards, a 2-2 two -two with First Strike that can be reconfigured to give First Strike and at the beginning of our upkeep gives a random artifact in our hand a one mana discount. The Halbert, another for Mirrodin equipment, giving First Strike and Trample as long as it's our turn. The Lizard Blades is a 1-1 one -one with Double Strike that can be reconfigured to give Double Strike. Mask of Immolation comes attached to a 1-1 one -one Elemental token, and then we can sacrifice the equipped creature to deal 1 damage to any target. 
Banterbone has a living weapon, so it's similar to Formiridin, but instead of coming attached to a 2-2 Rebel, it comes attached to a 0-0 Germ token, in this case getting plus one plus one, Vigilance and Lifelink. Then the Swiftfoot Boots equips for just one mana, giving Hexproof and Haste. Got a Thran Power Suit, this one costs 2 mana to equip, but then the equipped creature gets plus 1 plus 1 for each aura and equipment attached to it, and also has a Ward 2. And then the new Trailblazer's Boots gives a non-basic land walk, so our creature becomes unblockable if the opponent has any non-basic lands in play, can also be quite effective. Then at 3 mana Hex Gold Sledge, another alchemy card, comes attached to a 2-2 Rebel token, and then we also get to make a Goblin Cavalier, which is a card we could also be playing, but I did not end up including in the deck to make room for more equipment, but still a nice 1-1 Goblin that has Trample and plus 2 plus 0 for each equipment attached to it, and then the Sledge itself gives one extra power. Then there's the Whip as another for Murden equipment, giving Double Strike, making it cheaper to move around our equipment as well. There's Underrill giving plus 3 plus 1, and when our equipped creature attacks we get to make a pair of spirit tokens, potentially tapped and attacking if the equipped creature was legendary. Mithril Coat has Flash, so we can play it at instant speed, potentially even for free if we exiled it with Nahiri, and then we can attach it to a legendary creature for free, giving it indestructible, and the code itself is also indestructible. Nettle Cyst, another living weapon equipment attached to a germ, giving it plus one plus one for each artifact and or enchantment we control. And then we've got both Sword of Body in mind, as well as Sword of Forge and Frontier, and the protection can also come in handy in certain matchups, and they provide plenty of advantage if we manage to hit the opponent. Then at 4 mana there's a Hover Wings, giving the equipped Rebel flying, and then all creatures we control that are equipped also get one extra power, so it can be quite impactful. Halvar gives all our equipped creatures double strike, and we also get to move one of our equipment to another creature for free, or we can play Sword of the Realms for 2 mana, giving plus 2 plus 0 in Vigilance, and when the equipped creature dies we get to return it back to our hand. And then the Bladehold Cleaver, another fun alchemy card, getting to play with its many spellbook cards, which we otherwise don't get to experience on Arena. And then it's also just a 4 mana 4-4 four four attached to a rubble token, so perfect to play alongside Nahiri. And then finally we've got our Dragonwing Glider, essentially 4-4 four four Flying Haste. And then Ember Cleave, which is perfect to play for free with Nahiri, since we can flash it in, giving plus one plus one, a double strike and a trample. And we can also play it for pretty cheap if we're attacking with lots of our creatures. And then going over to the non-equipment cards, we've got Esper Sentinel, which can tax the opponent. Also nice if we can increase its power with our equipment, since that will increase the tax. Canvas Outfitter is another alchemy card that can make it cheaper to move our equipment around, especially nice with Colossus Hammer, as we can now equip it for just one mana. Sigardos 8 also combo with Colossus Hammer, which we can now flash in and attach to a creature, but being able to play all of our equipment at instant speed is quite useful, especially when Nahiri exiles those equipment, and we can then still play them before damage. And then there's Source to Plowshares and a Lightning Bolt as efficient removal spells. I could also put a Rebel Salvo in that category, since it will get a 1 mana discount for each equipment, so it's often a 1 mana to deal 5 damage to a creature or planeswalker. And then a Fervent Champion's also perfect here, a 1-1 with First Strike and Haste, and we get a 3 mana discount for all equip abilities that target it, so we can put a bunch of equipment onto it for free the turn we play it and potentially trigger Nahiri. Then at 2 mana there's Frodo, Determined Hero, which can also equip things for free that cost 2 or 3 mana, so it dodges Colossus Hammer, but still very good alongside the various swords. Gemma can also come into play and attach something for free, so this one does work with Colossus Hammer. SRAM gets to draw extra cards whenever we cast an equipment, also especially nice if we can cast those equipment for free. Then there's Arms Scavenger from Alchemy, which lets us draft a card from its 15 card spellbook every turn, and equip abilities we activate cost 1 mana less to activate, so it makes it much easier to move around our equipment. Then there's Jor Kadin, which can also draw extra cards and get plus 1 plus 1 for each other equipped creature we control when it attacks. There's the Master Smith, giving equipped creatures double strike when they attack. Arcane Signet and Mindstone as our only ramp artifacts. And then at 3 mana, Danitha also gives our equipment a 1 mana discount to play on a 2-2 with First Strike, Vigilance and Lifelink, so pretty good target for those various equipment. And then there's Forge Anew, another recent addition. When it enters we can return an equipment from our graveyard straight onto the battlefield, so especially nice with our reconfigure creatures, which are more likely to die. And then we can also activate our equip abilities at instant speed, and once each turn we can pay 0 mana rather than pay the equip cost, so another way to attach our Colossus Hammer. Then we mentioned Rebel Salvo, there's Akiri to draw extra cards, potentially make our creatures indestructible. And then at 4 mana there's a Reckless Crew, making a 2-1 Dwarf Berserker token for each equipment we control, and then we can attach those equipment to those tokens for free. Bruinor is a 5-4, giving each creature we control plus 2 plus 0 for each equipment attached to it, and then once each turn we can attach an equipment we control to a creature for free. 
And now the updated Nahiri, Heir of the Ancients, can often come down using the minus 3 ability, dealing damage to a creature or planeswalker equal to twice the number of warriors and equipment we control. Can also make more warrior tokens with the plus 1 that get to equip something for free, and the minus 2 gives us more card advantage. And then there's Astor, Bearer of Blades, when it enters can find another equipment to put in hand, and then all our equipment costs 1 mana to equip. And then last but not least, Danitha, Banalia's Hope, a 4-4 with First Strike, Vigilance and Lifelink, and when it enters can either equip something from our hand onto it for free, or something from the graveyard, it's also quite nice with the various reconfigure creatures. And then our mana base has plenty of red-white dual lands for mana fixing, important that they often come into play untapped, since we're an aggressive deck looking to curve out, good Crucible and Igancho for extra utility, and Den of the Bugbear as a creature land. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, facing Itali, Primal Conqueror, a red-green ramp deck. Our hand is pretty light on equipment, so I don't think I can keep this. This is better. The protection from green could also come in handy. And then, for now, Rampant Battery, get in for one. Turn two, Ancestral Blade, turn three, Sword, and then hopefully Nahiri. Could also swords the Helenor Elves, but it would be a pretty mana inefficient turn. So I think I prefer playing Blade, and then I'll still offer the trade here. Can keep swords to answer some larger creature. It's gonna be a Taxidermist next. And a Gilded Goose. So don't mind playing sword here, and then our token gets to attack. And then Outfitter can discount the equip cost on sword. But the priority is going to be to deploy Nahiri. Provisioner can immediately trigger landfall, make a treasure most likely. So next turn we could see Itali. And get to untap. Yeah, let's uh, go ahead and play Nahiri. Could also give Nahiri haste with a rabbit battery, and that way I get to trigger it twice. That may be worth it. And hope to hit two equipment here. Okay, found a boots and a mindstone, so get to play the boots at least. And in general, it's not like Itali's gonna find many devastating cards from our deck since they're mostly equipment that synergize with the rest of the deck. And then swords can exile their large red creatures, so the sort of body and mind can get past the green ones. Oh, it's gonna be a Titan of Industry first. Blowing up sort of body and mind, no doubt. That's a good one. And then a shield counter, but swords are still going to be effective here. So let's start here. Could also play Akiri to draw, but I think I prefer enabling Nahiri and putting more creatures on the battlefield. So it doesn't matter what we choose here, since they're all one mana to equip anyway. Equip the boots to the Outfitter. And then I'll start by attacking. And then we can still play Bone Splitter second main phase. Ooh, nice Hover Wings. Champion we can still play, and a Planes. Hover Wings can help us fly over, although they have a Goose to potentially chump. Bodon takes it all, falls to 9. And then we still have Akiri to potentially draw. And then I suppose we can equip the champion for free here. And that should be good enough for now. So we've got five equipped creatures ready to trigger Nahiri. Is it finally time for a tally? 
opponent has 10 mana here. Could be done to a Crater Hoof Behemoth, but nope, it's a tally. Finding Guardian Project and a Simeon Sling, so not the best hits. Although they get to draw a card here of Project right away. Ooh, a Great Henge, that's a good one. Can gain two life, maybe play another creature. So opponents at 11, and how about an Ember Cleave? Okay, so with Ember Cleave, we may just want to load up one creature with all the equipments. Although triggering Nahiri a bunch of times might be more fun. And I'm sure we'll still get there with Ember Cleave. So, could even play Nahiri first. And smash. That's a couple triggers. Not the most exciting hits, admittedly, but with an Ember Cleave in hand, we should be alright. And that's gonna go straight onto Nahiri. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Gandalf the White. And uh, yeah, our hand seems keepable, especially if we find another land or two. Turn one, eat her virtue. Turn two, lizard blades, and then probably a war whip on three. In the meantime, our opponent's ramping with arcane signet. And now the one ring to draw. So we won't be dealing them any damage this turn. And then of the bugbears a turn late. But uh, yeah, we can deploy our war whip. And then equip Eater of Virtue. And then we'll have two equipped creatures ready to attack to enable Nahiri next turn. Opponent gets to draw with the one ring. Hopefully they don't find any sweepers. Although if they do, at least Eater of Virtue will grant Double Strike, exiling the Lizard Blades. And it's gonna be a Teleportation Circle, can flicker the One Ring. Now, the One Ring only prevents damage if you actually cast it, so it's just gonna help reset the counters on it, which is fine. So, play Nahiri and Smash. Don't want to play land yet in case we exile one. And Underrill is an excellent hit here. Opponent draws with a ring. And then I'm expecting a sweeper next turn. Although we should have enough equipment in play to make it easy to redeploy Nahiri. Opponent can now also flash in Gandalf, a 4-5. Still pretty easy to attack into here. Fateful Absence kills Nahiri. And a Glass Casket can answer my token, perhaps. Goes for Lizard Blades. Okay, so yeah, the card advantage from the One Ring is catching up to us. Shadow Spear, one of the ways to remove Indestructible from the One Ring as well. Okay, Fervent Champion. We can play and then put a bunch of equipment on it. That's pretty exciting. Is that the best we can do? So this is definitely happening. This is happening. And then I could either play a Nettle Cyst and equip it, or maybe just equip the War Whip onto our Fervent Champion, and then we should have exactly 14 damage. And our opponent explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. 
Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand is decent. Do need to find an extra land so this uh, Sundown Pass comes into play untapped. Inquisitions can have a look. Well, at least our hand's pretty redundant, and whatever they take, we can get back with Donathai eventually. Is our opponent playing Umezawa, which can try to cheat stuff into play? And yeah, let's go ahead and play a Simeon Sling now. Turn to Bactar Bone. Could offer the trade. I'll just take it. Now a Barbed Spike is also an option. Well, let's uh, hit for one. I'll still go for the Batter Bone. And there's Satoru Mizawa. Now upgraded to a 3 4. And a Reckless Crew could be exciting. For now, just a leather armor. A Barbed Spike. And. We'll equip the Simeon Sling for free, so next turn I can attack all out and trigger Nahiri a couple of times. And with a Reckless Crew we don't really mind if some of our creatures die. Alright, so Ginger Brute's gonna sneak on through. Pona still needs a land for Ninjutsu. But they might have a different Ninjutsu creature. The Silver Fur Master. Also reduced down to one mana now. And Ornithopter's next, also a great ninjutsu enabler. Could be a reason to keep our Thopter token back to block Ornithopter, but I think we just want to play Nahiri and Smash. And I hope to exile some more equipment. Alright, not bad. Can play a SRAM and then play a free crowbar to draw a card. And then Leather Armor, probably on Nahiri, could also protect Sram since Nahiri is pretty cheap to replay. But Nahiri is still a more valuable creature here. But yeah, now our opponent could use Satoru to cheat something expensive into play by attacking with Ornithopter. So we didn't leave ourselves open to that attack, although then they might have kept the Ginger Brute alive and uh, just used that instead. On the bright side, we have multiple creatures that are already equipped, ready to attack and trigger Nahiri. Ooh, and a Jingataxis, yeah, that's a good one. So that's going to counter artifacts, instants and sorceries. So it's quite effective against our deck. Ornithopter also doubled by Jin, so that's living the dream here. Bones got an Infernal Grasp, also copied by Jin. This is a disaster. Luckily they couldn't take out Nahiri thanks to the Leather Armor. But uh, things are falling apart pretty quickly now. So the first card I play gets countered by Jin. Can still attack and trigger Nahiri at least. Maybe I should start there. A land and a Shadow Spear. So Shadow Spear gets countered by Jin, and then I can still play Hover Wings. Or we could Reckless Crew, turn all of our equipment into equipped creatures now. Yeah, that might be better here. And I could move the Leather Armor back to Nahiri. Ornithopter attacks. What else are they gonna cheat into play? It's 
can be the author of Jingataxius, Kor Augur. So opponent gets to draw a whole new hand while making us discard end of turn. Okay, opponent's not messing around here. Double Jingataxius on the battlefield. Ornithopter doubled again. At least it only triggers once each turn. But yeah, this is going to be a pretty challenging game to win. So it's my last chance to play Donatha here. A Rebel Salvo could potentially be an answer to one of the opponent's creatures. Not sure which is more problematic, Core Augur or Progress Tyrant. So if I play Halberd, it gets countered, and then Salvo takes out probably the uh, Progress Tyrant. And then we can attack, or we can start by attacking, but it's also just a good blocker here. That works. And then smash. And hope to hit some goodies. Could have been better. So if I deal 2 to the Master, 3 to Umezawa, it still doesn't die since it has 4 toughness. So probably take out Umezawa then. And then Nahiri's pretty cheap to replay. Especially once we play our free Halberd. Play Asper Sentinel. And then can equip Sentinel to increase its power. And I can put a leather armor on Berserker. Alright, this looks okay. I have to discard our hand to the core auger here, but we still have a Nahiri ready to be replayed. Our opponent does have quite a bit of mana thanks to double Ornithopter of Paradise. 8 total. So they could still replay Umezawa and Ninjutsu for 3. It's gonna be a Disruptor to tap something down. At 16 I don't think our opponent can go for lethal, but they're going for an attack. Sentinel could block Silverfur Master, or I can just take it. Close call. So they're gonna Ninjutsu Ornithopter, replay it. I may just want Sentinel around. Their opponent with a Prosperous Thief making a treasure, replace Ornithopter. So they still have 4, 5, 6, 7 mana left. They might be keeping up instant speed removal for Nahiri. A Binding Palm Ninja. And our opponent draws 7. So the hope is that they don't have removal or counter spells for Nahiri. Because uh, we're out of options. Move to attackers. Alright, so we get to attack. That's five triggers on the stack. Can play four mana Nahiri, Arrow of the Ancients. And we could play a free Sword of the Realms. Spectral Sailor to block. Not sure if they meant to use a treasure there. So, not too many profitable blocks, just with a Binding Palm. The rest at least trades. And actually if I use Nahiri to kill the Silver Fur Master, then the Binding Palm would also die. Bone falls to two. So let's play Nahiri. And then play the Sword of the Realm for free. And by taking out the Silver Fur, we also finish off Binding Palm. That seems worth it. Okay. And then I could move the armor onto Nahiri. So not a bad turn. 
Opponent had a Brazen Borrow after all. We get to draw off Sentinel, one blocker back. Okay, put that back in the command zone since Jinkataxis is going to make us discard anyway. And the Bone Splitter also discarded here. Are we dead? We're at 9. Bones got 7 power in play, but of course they could ninjutsu something else. So Sentinel chumping Jinkataxis here if I get the chance. And yeah, Nazahal for 7 extra damage is 9 exactly. Well, that was certainly an exciting game, seeing double Jinkataxis in play and almost coming back. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Sir Farron, green aggro deck, and our hand's pretty decent. Lots of cheap equipment and a source to plowshares for interaction. So, a couple options, turn one here. Maybe start with the uh, leather armor, which I can then equip right away onto a Simeon Sling, for instance. Or I can protect my scavenger, which may be a priority instead. Although if I play Sling and Boots, then next turn I could already play Nahiri and potentially trigger it. So that's potentially more exciting. Now the Sling is unlikely to have a great attack, but we'll see next turn. Old Growth Troll, yeah, that's a pretty good blocker. They're taking seven. So now, probably want to Swords the Troll to get rid of it, and then we can play Scavenger. So let's play the Planes, and then next one we can deploy Nahiri. And then Boots of Speed. I can also equip thanks to the discount from Scavenger, I suppose. Sir Farron attacks. So this kind of implies a pump spell. I'll just take it. Scavenger triggers, finding... Probably just a cheap kite sail. And move the uh, Boots of Speed onto Nahiri. And then I can play Nahiri. Don't play a land yet in case we exile one, even if it costs me a bit of life here. So yeah, Boots of Speed onto Nahiri which we can do thanks to the scavenger's discount. And then move the leather armor onto the sling. So I have three equipped creatures attacking and hopefully find some goodies. All right, get to play a spike at least to maybe keep us alive. I cannot move the leather armor anymore, but I can move the boots of speed onto the thopter. And that's it for now. Maybe moving Kite Sail onto Nahiri would have been okay too. So the thopter likely has to jump to survive here. Divar stand. Okay. So jump adaptive, take five. Scavenger finds... Let's go with a Rapier. And a Rebel Salvo is excellent here. So, Rapier onto Nahiri. Play the Blades. Equip it with Boots of Speed. And 
mean, I could equip it with Barbed Spike as well, but let's leave more mana available. Unless we have Lethal here. Let's see. Yeah, I guess it's worth it. And attack. Four triggers, and we still have Rebel Salvo available. There we go. Four hits. Bone falls to three. Yeah, had I moved the rapier onto the lizard blades, we would have gotten a little bit more damage, but still not quite enough for lethal. And then this is one mana to equip, so don't want to do that, but I can move some stuff on defense for free. And a leather armor. And that should suffice. Keep up our Rebel Salvo. It's gonna be Anissa who shakes the world. If that happens. Considered casting the salvo in response to them untapping. But we've got favorable blocks for the most part. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Facing Joyra, Weatherlight Captain. So a deck that's gonna draw a ton of cards the turn they play Joyra. Our hand is missing some cheaper artifacts, so I don't think I can keep. As much as I like the uh, Sword of Forge and Frontier, this is much better. So turn one could play Rabbit Battery, turn two Boots of Speed plus Shadow Spear. And that already sets up a turn three Nahiri, even if I don't have an equipped creature yet at the time. Okay, now we could play Batterbone, although that doesn't enable Nahiri next turn. I think I prefer getting Nahiri down a turn sooner then. It's going to be a Magda for the opponents, and a source to Plowshares. So we'll play Nahiri and pass, and hope she survives. Magda attacks. Yeah, maybe I just block with a Rabbit Battery then. Next turn I can play Batterbone and equip it with Boots of Speed. Alternatively, I can block with Nahiri and they can maybe finish it off with a Burn Spell. And then next turn I can just play Nettle Cyst and take it from there. Yeah, maybe that's okay too. Possible they just wanted the extra mana. Key to the Archive, fair enough. So Nahiri survives. But our opponent will get to untap with lots of mana next turn. So we gotta make it count. So, what's the best sequence here? So I can equip my two current creatures, leaving one mana left to potentially Swords Joyra before they combo off, although I would need to draw planes for that, or can just play Mountain. Yeah, maybe that's the more conservative line here. So, Boots on Battery. Shadow Spear on Nahiri, leaving white mana untapped. Get to attack, trigger Nahiri twice, and leave swords up. Alright, don't get to play anything for free, sadly. The spark answers Nahiri, that's too bad. So now five mana, since we haven't deployed more equipment, but at least we get to take out Jora. Fair is fair. A Reckless Crew could give us three creatures, or we can go for Nettle Cysts and then equip it with Battery or Boots. And if we equip with a Boots, Battery can still attack. And 
and now with an untapped land I could play Nahiri and equip it. And a Gilded Lotus still gives him 5 mana here, and 3 spent on Kira to protect our creatures. Luckily our deck doesn't have much removal to begin with. Okay, so I can play Nahiri, smash with just a Nuddle Cyst. That resolves. Hit for 5. And we hit a Sigardus Aid. At least we got it out of the way here. So your opponent's at 7, but they have all the mana in the world. So I'm a bit concerned. 6 mana to replay Joyra. It's gonna be the Immolating Inferno to kill all my creatures. That's pretty rude. Well, Reckless Crew is next. Can try to give us more creatures. And Joyra's familiar. But at least now if they play Jora, they may not be able to draw a ton of cards with it. Could also play Akiri and then give it haste, which uh, draws us a card and puts the opponent pretty low as well. Reckless Crew would be more exciting if I had like one more equipment in play. Although I guess with Reckless Crew, we still have a Boots of Speed equipped to one of the tokens, so that can attack right away. I think I still like Akiri equip the Boots of Speed. And attack. And then next turn maybe Reckless Crew. Can also make Akira indestructible here. And there's Joyra. Did they string together another historic spell? Ooh, a River's Rebuke. Ouch. Yeah, that's kind of the worst case scenario here. Everything sent packing. So now what I could do is play Boots of Speed, play Shadow Spear, and then Reckless Crew. That would force the opponent to trade away Jora for the token equipped with the Boots. We would still have one equipped with Shadow Spear. Take it from there. Don't hate that idea. I'm one mana short of killing the opponent with Bruinor, since we could give it haste, but then we can give it Trample or vice versa. Do we have a guaranteed lethal elsewhere? Play the Boots, equip for one mana. Could play Akiri, I suppose, and then make it indestructible. Maybe that's just better here. Still get to draw, still for the opponent to block, and we don't even lose Akiri in the process. And now a Lightning Bolt can also finish them off. Needed to keep up white mana for Akiri's ability. Okay. So I'm liking my chances now. Karn's Temporal Sundering to take an extra turn. Okay. That keeps him in the game. And there's Joyra. And aligned. Alright, so I think we're finally at the finish line. Now let's just put them out of their misery. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Kethys as the Hidden Hand, a legendary deck. Our hand leaves a lot to be desired, missing white mana. Bonesaw and Brooch are decent, but I don't think I'm keeping this. Okay, this is definitely better. So let's see, for Snarl I have to reveal a mountain or a plains, so Sacred Foundry also counts. So can do that now. Turn 2, play Ancestral Blade. Turn 3, War Whip. And that lets us move the blade for free. And then Brunor is also going to be quite nice, pumping all the equipped creatures. Opponent passes with maybe removal up. So let's hit for two first. And play the whip. Opponent's going to flash in Samwise. Fair enough. 
Is it time for Kethys? Does survive our Lightning Bolt? Nope, it's gonna be Loran to destroy our War Whip. That's too bad. So Nahiri back up to 5 mana. So this turn could be okay to play a bunch of our cheaper cards out. Could play Bone Splitter, Crowbar, and still Lightning Bolt. And then our Rebel probably doesn't mind attacking. Could also send in the Soldier, and if it trades, just move the equipment. Opponent trades for our Soldier. And then we'll just move probably, I guess, the Bone Splitter, since that way we can attack into Kethys more easily. No need to bolt Loran just yet. Okay, Toski. So now if Loran hits us, they get to draw. But our opponent's going to hang back. So yeah, we can play Nahiri. Could even play Banter Fist into a two-mana Nahiri. Attack and then enable her. That seems fine. And then we'll have some blockers back for Toski. And hope to exile an equipment. Find a Sigarda's aid. And a land. So our opponent soaks up for damage. And we get to play the lands. Could Lightning Bolt Loran, could still do it in the opponent's turn. Yeah, let's just pass. Opponent deciding whether they want each player to draw with Loran, they do. And then next turn we can also suit up Nahiri. It's gonna be a Lotho. Okay. So our opponent's gonna cast another spell here to make a treasure. It's gonna be Ossification to Exile Nahiri, presumably. So then I'm probably bolting Loran. And then it's going to be pretty cheap to replay Nahiri still. Tonski's going to get to draw. And our opponent's not actually attacking with Loran. In that case, I could also take out Lotho, prevent him from making more treasure. And just take the one. Ooh, a Reckless Crew. That one's pretty spicy. So I have four equipment. I would get to make four tokens. Now, of course, they don't have haste, so they wouldn't get to attack right away. But um, I'm still kind of interested in just replaying Nahiri and seeing what we can exile. So you can play Clifftop Retreats and Jorkadine. Opponent now trades off Loron. And draws on the way out. Finding a Fervent Champion. Could also play Mindstone as better insurance in case of a board wipe. Although some of the board wipes might be the ones that get rid of all creatures except a legendary ones, and then we would still keep Jorkadine around. Urza Saruna's Blast. So our opponent untaps with 7 mana. That is quite scary. But they're gonna need a good turn. Old Rusty, not the end of the world. Ends up making an insect. And Kethys finally makes an appearance. So that can also replay some of the legendaries at some point. Toski forced to attack. And 
Okay, and our opponent explodes. Yeah, we can suit up both our Nahiri and Jorkadeen, which is going to get a lot of extra power and toughness here for each other equipped creature. And then could even consider playing Brunor, which would also pump the team. Or maybe wait and see what Nahiri finds. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Astor, Bearer of Blades, so it's the equipment mirror match. And our hand is decent if we can find some cheaper equipment at two mana, especially one that comes attached to a creature that would be excellent. Although Reckless Crew can eventually help um, with two equipments, discount Nahiri down to four mana. Can't quite play turn three, so really missing one extra equipment here. But uh, I'll give it a shot. Okay, nice. Ancestral Blade is exactly what we were looking for. So we'll play the Blade. And then... Can't quite play Nahiri next turn, but we can play Halberd and at least equip our current creature. And with a Reckless Crew, the more equipment we draw here, the better. One's playing the spike. Okay, let's go ahead and play Halberd. And we can suit up our soldier. Hit for five. Ornithopter of Paradise is next. They could equip it with the boots. Spike is three mana. Ooh, a Thundering Rebuke kills my token. All right, so instead of playing Nahiri when we don't have any creatures to attack right away, might as well cast a Reckless Crew. There we go. We've got an army of Dwarf Berserkers ready to attack and trigger Nahiri. What does Astor find? A Bilbo's Ring. Boots to give haste. And uh, yeah, we've got a couple options here. Don't have any equipment in the graveyard for Forge anew. But playing Nahiri and attacking with all seems reasonable. They get to eat one of my tokens. But I get to trigger Nahiri three times to find more goodies. And then we'll still have a Nahiri in play, of course. As per Sentinel, we can play. And then I might want to move Bone Splitter onto the Sentinel to increase its power even more, or I can just move the Halberd onto it so we have more equipped creatures to attack next turn if I just want to play a Glider. And then I'll maybe move the Ancestral Blade around. So the two equipment decks are operating on a different axis. We are trying to play lots of cheap equipment that come attached to creatures, whereas the opponent is trying to play equipment and then cheat on the equip cost with Astor. Fateful Absence takes out Nahiri, can still replay it next turn potentially. And Spike equips onto Astor. And our opponent foretold a card. Not sure what that could be. Perhaps a Demon Bolt to deal 4 damage. Okay, Bonesaw. Another cheap way to discount Nahiri. So let's say we play Bonesaw. Yeah, it does feel like our opponent's got a Demon Bolt in exile. So playing Nahiri is not going to work since they're going to be able to take it out before I get a chance to trigger it. So instead maybe just play Glider and force them to take that out instead since we're still threatening lethal or at least a chum block. And then I can play Outfit or Second Main to discount the equip cost on Glider, which is pretty effective. Attack. Yep, yeah, there's a Demon Bolt. So your opponent survives. So glad we didn't go for Nahiri. And then play Outfitter. Targeting the glider. 
Well, we know about Bilbo's ring, so that can make Astro unblockable. If they have another powerful equipment, we could just be dead. And yeah, there's a Black Blade Reforged, giving plus one plus one for each land they control. So they should have just enough mana to equip everything, thanks to Astor's discount. And yeah, that's a 10-powered Astor, which is going to attack unblocked here to kill us for Xaxes. Put him down to 3 after drawing. So yeah, very close game. GG's, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing the 5 color Shrines, and our hand seems keepable. Could use a 2 mana equipment, but uh, Eater of Virtue on 1, Andril on 3, and then we should be able to play Nahiri, especially thanks to Bonesaw. Which I can keep secret for now, since we can play it for free. And then Swords, an answer to Life's Origin. Okay, a rabbit battery is nice. So I'll play it and equip Eater of Virtue to it. That way if they deal with the battery, Eater will also grant haste. And then next turn with a surprise bone saw, we can play Nahiri already and enable it. Okay. Well, let's hope to exile an equipment here we can cast. That's too bad, found an Akiri, which we wouldn't be able to play. But turn 3 Nahiri is not bad. Infinite Rage can take out Rabbit Battery. Is there anything we can do about it? I guess we could equip Battery to Nahiri. And then the Eater falls off. Could also just attack and see what happens and then decide what to do afterwards. And then maybe just play Andoril. Okay, found a collar which we can play for free. Yeah, I don't think I really mind if our opponent takes out my rabbit battery. Since then Eater can grant haste. Makes it easy to keep uh, creatures attacking while equipped. Opponent taps out for life's origin. Makes a 1-1. Okay, so we've got quite a few options now. Could equip Underill, it's only 2 mana. And then I could still Swords the Life's Origin. That seems like a good starting point. Start by attacking. The Spirits enter tapped and attacking because it was a legendary. And we get to play a free Batter Fist. And Swords, Life's Origin. Okay. So we're in a pretty good spot here, although a Sweeper could still get us. Hondon can finish off our 3-1. But still leaves behind our equipment to discount Nahiri. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, for only having three lands in play, we managed to put a lot of stuff on the battlefield. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Frodo. Another equipment deck, a slightly different take on it. And uh, we've got both Signet and Mindstone in our opener, which is pretty unusual. But uh, yeah, I'm definitely down to keep. Can fetch up a Plains here, perhaps, or a Mountain, doesn't matter. And then turn to maybe Mindstone. And then we want to try and double spell and get these equipment in play as soon as possible. Self a Samurai. Okay. So now I can go Signet plus War Whip. Start discounting Nahiri. And then next turn, Sledge would discount Nahiri down to 4, or we could just play Nahiri and attack. Okay, Banishing Lights might go for the War Whip itself, as opposed to the token. And 
and Adonitha sadly cannot get our card back from exile, only from graveyard. Or we could put the sledge onto Donitha right away. I think we'll go for sledge and then see if we want to play smith here as well. It costs one mana to move the sledge onto our author rebel, so that could attack with double strike. So we're a bit light on the equipment here. Usually not a concern in this deck. But uh, at the very least we can play Nahiri next turn and get one trigger. Put on bottoms their card with a Jalfern Void. And Glamdring is next. So they may have some other instants and sorceries to synergize with it. Frodo can equip Glamdring right away. So it does now also have first strike. Plate armor was a good draw. Can play Nahiri for four mana still. And then I can still attack thanks to double strike from Master Smith to at least trade for Frodo or force him to sack Samurai. That seems fine. And we found a land. Opponent takes it. And now I still get to equip the sledge elsewhere if I'd like. So I could equip the uh, Gavalier, which benefits from being equipped the most. Ooh, a sort of Forge and Frontier. Pretty good here with Frodo. Gets to attack past all our red creatures. Also gains lifelink from the Selfless Samurai. So 4 life up to 17, and then we'll have to wait and see what sort of Forge and Frontier exiles. A Borrowed Time they cannot cast, and a Blank Blade Reforged. Okay, so next turn they can grow Frodo even more. My Gunjo is going to be a little late to the party once they equip Blank Blade, since it gives plus one plus one right away. If I put it on Gavalier, it would go up to seven, eight, nine power, double strike. Yeah, that's probably good enough here, even though I get fewer Nahiri triggers. Attack all out. And we get to Trample too. Alright, so we got to see our red-white Nahiri equipment deck in action, and I'm very glad with how it turned out. Nahiri reminds me of Emery in how it keeps getting a discount as the game progresses, so even after a board wipe, unlike other aggro decks, where that can actually recover and potentially get back on the board pretty quickly, with Nahiri drawing us extra cards, it is a bit of a balancing act between having enough cheap equipment to enable Nahiri, while still having some more substantial cards that we can play for free from Exile, but I would lean towards the cheaper end of the curve, since once you get some of those cheap equipment going, it's going to be easier and easier to keep exiling more and more cards, and eventually you're going to overwhelm the opponent. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.